senso è altissimo poi lo, e poi scendi sugli obiettivi quotidiani. Sei bellissimo. Va bene. Ottimo. La civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. Vedi che mi perdo teorico, cioè me, eh, a me fai, fai quello che vuoi. Lavoro, la persona. Work, the person at the center of hope and experience. A, a, an inviting title for a, a Saturday evening uh, ex uh, conference in a place like Rimini, in a place which hopefully others driven by uh, goals like ours are, are hoping how to, to live fully this evening. And as such, it's with, with gratitude that we, we thank you for, for having come here to, to see us and to be part of a dialogue, a dialogue which started in October last year and started thanks to one of the people who's here with us now, one of the young managers, who is Michela Cerriani, who's joining us remotely. When she saw the title of the meeting, she phoned me and said, we have to ask for a, a time and a place to, to open a discussion on, on this theme, on this theme which is a passion for man within the context of work, of the world of work. If we think about it, in our lives, it's about 4,000 weeks. We spend the first thousand uh, learning and the, the next 2,500 more or less will spend them working. And as such, it's, it's a very important part of our significant chunk of our life we dedicate to, to work. And for the lucky ones, they'll have a thousand, the rest of us maybe 500 uh, weeks left at the end if, if, if our pensions are still a thing. And so from Michela's invite, and she'll be joining us remotely because in the meantime, Michela's awaiting her, she's pregnant with her fourth child, uh, Michela, who's a, uh, a senior consultant in organizational development. And talking with Bernal Schultz, she, she helped us get in touch with other young managers. We've got Daniele Novara with us, who's in the information technology sector. He's a customer experience manager. We have Luca Martellosio, who's a civil engineer, who, after being an employee for a short while, followed a, a boss of his that he trusted, and together they, they founded a, a firm, uh, a small um, country, uh, company, which in just six short years has come to employ many, many more people and has grown exponentially. 
Barbara Capodiferro is a, an excellent executive director in an investment bank, an international bank, and she occupies risk management. And as such, she, she helps other firms face the, the complexity of the international market. We also have Andrea Fumagalli, who's an HR manager. He's a quite a particular kind of HR manager because he works in the air transport sector, in particular with the handling of uh, personnel. The people he deals with are those, uh, are those who work in airports who deal with logistics, for example, those who load and unload baggage in airports. So you can imagine the, the, the immensity of the task which he, which he manages and joining us remotely because for logistic reasons he wasn't able to join us we have Pietro Duca who's a compensation manager in an important banking group in Italy and as such he's faced with the challenges tied to uh, motivation and to the work life and so through these managers uh, an, a discussion was born tied to Bernard's invitation and this is why we decided to bring this to the meeting. Bernard made us uh, meet Franco Guidi. So I, I like saying Franco Guidi, I'll say it again, he's not only an interesting man but above all he was able to, to show that he's interested many times in my experience when I, when I meet managers and I meet entrepreneurs and Franco is both. Often I see these people, many, they're quite hesitant to, to talk about themselves, to, to discuss. They often, they do often sometimes struggle to stop and to, to show um, a, a level of engagement. But what hit us immediately about Franco was his, his desire, his availability to talk to us and uh, something that shone behind his eyes. And he offered to, to give it, to ask a few questions to the managers you have here. So who is Franco? For, for 20 years, he was a manager of an important uh, pharmaceutical multinational group. It's a, a career that keeps going upwards that will soon bring him to the right to the peak of this group as one of the, one of the managers in charge of uh, consumer goods, especially, for example, uh, contact lenses. Now that this. Uh, this structure has uh, is now part of the Novartis group after changes in leadership and being bought out. Franco decided to leave and he, he decided to change his career slightly in a very brave manner for someone like him and after he got a... Uh, he went to, to, to Bocconi University, uh, a leading university in Milan to study business economics and he was always been uh, involved with numbers, with economics, and he decided to completely change. And he went to work in a, uh, a management firm. He worked there for six years, but then something, something broke in the, uh, in the mechanism. At the kind of the root of this, this mechanism, because a, he, he de began to develop a divergence in values. And in 2007, along with other six uh, of his colleagues he founded Lombardini 22. Lombardini 22 is a, a group which is rapidly in the fields of design, of engineering, of architecture, is becoming an Italy's leading um, group in manufacturing and now over 390 professionals work alongside them. So although he's, at mu he's got a lot, he would have a lot to say, he decided not only to be interesting but interested and it's through his questions to the young managers that we want to start. Thank you, Pietro, for the introduction. Uh, I'm obviously very, very happy to be here and very curious of what's going to come from this. Let's say that my questions are aimed moreover towards the question of our, of our sense, this theme. After two years of a pandemic, we've all, we've all had a, a new way of thinking on, on work, on why we work on whether it's worth it. Uh, a theme on the why, why to work, you know, there's been a mass, the, the, you know, the phenomenons of the mass exit of workers from the workplace. And I'd like to hear from these young managers, 
how do they see the, 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 the reason for work and why do they do what they do? Why do they commit like they do? What's the kind of the possible reward for, the, for, the, for all the effort they pour in? The second proposition I, I kind of threw out there is for me, work has always been a, a three legged stool. And its three legs have always, uh, is, uh, have always been that I'm working, is that I'm learning, I'm having fun, and that I'm earning justly. And in that sense, you know, I feel like I'm in my, that's how I feel if I'm in my zone. You know, every now and again in my, whenever I would feel that one of those legs was lacking, I, that's when I'd know it's time to move on. And I want to see if that's still the case with these young managers over a decade later. And the third point is on uh, significant people. In my experience, I remember clearly some people who've been, who've managed to make me learn things about myself that I otherwise wouldn't have known. To realize my, what I'm like as a person, my own limits, and what kind of path I could take in the future. And I understand quite clearly how important these people have been in my, in my journey. The important thing is, you've, have you already met significant people in your journey? What have you learned from them? Who are they? What would you like to recreate from them? Would you like to be a person like that for others who today are beginning in the world of work? Simply, these are kind of the questions I want to be asking. I don't know who will be answering to what, so I'm, I'm on the tip of my toes here. I'll break the ice here. Uh, I'll start from, I was very struck by the question you asked about the idea of why working and as well as the third, so I'll tell you a bit about myself. So I was lucky to work in a, a leading uh, company in building development and it taught me a, a job that I love now and gave me a certain set of skills that I was managed, managed to take forwards but also thanks to the, uh, the risk I took in taking on managerial responsibility that I've learnt immensely you know through certain circumstances my old boss who you know he, he, he'd founded this new company he called me and he asked me to come and work for him as Pietro told us so the idea of who to follow is one that I've, I've always had to I've, I've, I've got in mind you know my own choice to, to change job was was caused both by the, uh, I had the chance to, to follow a, uh, a leader, someone who professionally had, the person who pro professionally had amazed me the most and I, who I'd learnt from immensely. And was a person of, of great, his name's Stefan, a person of great responsibility and he always gave me uh, the chance to lead right from the beginning. So I had this chance to learn from a, from a true master, especially in how to create a new uh, reality in a company he it was a company he'd founded that at the time was little more than a startup. So I was astounded by the chance to be able to uh, to found my own reality in a uh, subverted in what I'd already seen in my limited experience in the world of work. So both the level of how to go about doing business, but also the possibility that how to collaborate with other people and create uh, the conditions in which work, the work life and the places of work become a, a comfortable place, a more relaxing one, a place that's more engaging to be with. I now work for a medium sized company and I've got colleagues who really interest me and it's a, it's a brilliant place to work. And the, the aspect that fascinates me the most is the way in which bit by bit by building a kind of new reality, my rapport with my colleagues, they always, they begin to feel more and more like uh, uh, they're in a journey with me. They're not just people I work with. And through, you know, through one circumstance or another, uh, we, we've been, we all were affected in a kind of a global, globally significant moment over the past two years. For me, the pandemic was kind of a chance for the questions you were talking about, about the, the reasons why to work. It, I had, had a lot of chance to, to think, okay, well, I spend ages working, so 
surely these these colleagues, these people I, I spend hours with every day, they, they should be significant to me. And the pandemic raised these kind of questions. You know, it's not like we, uh, it's not. So to me, the the thing that fascinates me the most about what we're building is, is exactly this, uh, the ability to to realize, to see a, a colleague as a, as a companion in a journey, as someone I can build a rapport with. You know, this is something that I, I cling to quite strongly. It's in, in certain moments of, uh, of intensity, I always start by asking whenever I meet my colleagues, you know, how are you? I want to, I, I want to know really kind of what the, who these people are because they help me learn more about myself in like you said stuff that I don't know about my own myself they can show me and it, it strikes me that I'm I'm seeing a, a desire to, to truly value the others I work with you know how can I say I I yearn to, uh, to, to learn both what I'm doing wrong and how I can learn to, to correct that and also how to to truly draw out the proper value from my work that I, I would like to see the fruit I'd like to see my work bear. So let's say that it's important to distinguish a bit between the, the, the aim and the objective of our work. You know, what are we asked of by our employer? So, you know, if someone spends all the day breaking rocks, it's important that, they, that he says, you know, uh, uh, my work towards building a mosaic. Surely if he's told this, he'll, he'll do his job with a bit more energy. It's a question of what, what am I looking for? What, what can I get from my employer? But also I feel myself a level of responsibility that I'm working towards building a, uh, an environment where everyone can feel free to express themselves for who they are in proposing what they believe, in sharing their ideas. And that's what we're trying to work, what we're trying to do where I work. I'll give you a small example. Recently, the past couple of years, we proposed as a society to devolve uh, part of what we're doing to uh, to give part of our revenue as a donation to charities and to NGOs asking our um, our employees what they'd like to do with these profits and they, they told us we learned from them the kind of things we'd like we'd, uh, they'd like to support and it was an important way of promoting a kind of idea that we are together that we we're working towards building something more than anything else, it's we're trying to build an environment where really the, the other has a chance to feel themselves wanted, uh, a sense of community. Okay. Thank you, Luca. So therefore, very important challenges that the desire to create a community, we could use this word, there is a place, it is like a place where the other is recognizes himself as important, as a value for his contribution in the work that he brings. And as a collaborator of a startup, you would like this to be the condition. And it, an example of this is to take a part of the profits and make it at the disposal so that the collaborator uh, benefits from it. So my situation is a bit different. As you said before, I help companies to uh, manage their risks. So we have certain budget goals at the end of the year and our work is much more uh, has to do with individuals in a different sense to what Luca was talking about. After Brexit, we had to decentralize our offices and we moved from our trading floor in London and we had new collaborators closer to home and remote working for more than an, an hour and a half, a, a year and a half, and this sense of loneliness and solitude emerged much more. I also found that many of my bosses and managers changed between 
the various these years and I realized that one of those legs of the three-legged stool that uh, Franco was talking about was the importance of having someone to learn from. I have had bosses that I have esteemed less and that I tried to take the good, good a look at the good in and take that home. And I also had other bosses that uh, remained as role models for a long time. It is very difficult sometimes to create a human relationship with these figures. And I've always looked for someone to have someone important to look towards, to look at as a model. And I also think that being paid uh, in a sense that is um, proportionate to the results that I um, that I get that I reach is a very important point and this also has to do with this with the um, the need to be recognized and valued in my work for what I do and the moments in which I have felt most satisfied with uh, my work is when I ha feel that um, the recognition for what I have done was proportionate to what I was giving to the company. So when I um, began my career in a very unorthodox way, I um, had to go on maternity leave when I started in this investment bank. And I, however, felt that uh, that uh, I needed to learn to be recognized in my work for the value that I can provide to the company. This is a dimension of work that is a bit different that requires a personal involvement but also a distance to have a relationship with a mentor which, can, which you feel supported by and then you talk about the context and the sense of feeling recognized and valued within a bigger and wider context and to that this be um, have a, um, a concrete recognition uh, through the, the amount of money you earn. So you have underlined that this desire is important, that you be valued in who you are and what you bring to the table. So I will try now. Do you want to go, Michaela? By the way, I realized that uh, I introduced you without saying that she organized this um, this meeting. She is a senior consultant in the field of organizational development and helps companies to organize their resources in a more uh, efficient way. Michaela, do you want to take the floor? Well, at this point, well, I would say yes, of course. So first of all, I would like to say that I'm very, very uh, sad that uh, I was not able to participate today. I really uh, would have liked to be there. I want to take up what Barbara spoke about, about the desire is born from the experience that I have in my work, which is to bring a passion for man within organizations. And I asked myself, where did I see this passion for man at work? And what came to mind were examples that I felt that I experienced myself in my own personal experience. As Pietro was saying, who is also my boss, as well as my colleague uh, for the last 10 years, I am a mother of three children and I am expecting my fourth child. And in time, the more my family growed, uh, the, the more my family grew, the more I desired to invest in my work. And 
you probably people told me I shouldn't uh, work as much because the uh, benefits that I would have gotten with the amount of children I have would have made me break even anyway. But I decided to invest anyway in my career because this has to do with the meaning that I link that I have that I link to the um, aspect of work in my life. I have a desire to express myself, to be present and to generate beyond the uh, range of what I already, what life has already afforded me um, in, other, uh, in other aspects. I don't mean only in a creative sense. Mm, work is like a place where my person can express itself and can build and bring a value. And the more I uh, act within my work, the more I understand the value of my presence in my work. In, the, in organizational development, people say that uh, we, we say that we should use our self as uh, the most important instrument that we have. And whether I be there or someone else be there present, the result will always be different because the cognitive, organizational and uh, uh, factors are different. And also the moments of bravery that I've had to bring to the table bring a value. So in my organization, I also received a couple of signs that confirmed all of this this intuition that I had. For example, I can give you examples that may seem quite small, but when we work together, sometimes, uh, very often actually, and it's quite annoying, many people ask me, Miki, what would you do? What do you think? And this takes me away from my um, comfortable position of a spectator and asks me to put myself into, uh, into the game and put myself at in in the in a play and I am asked to bring all of myself or as Luca was saying there are people in my organization that want me to grow who care about my growth who want that my role be more and more become more and more personal and that my skills and all the things that I need to work on be a value and become a greater good for the company. And for me, one of those legs of that three-legged stool is the conditions that enable me to uh, pursue my career without renouncing or abandoning my role as a mother. If I was able to uh, have a part-time job with the flexibility that I have and with the possibility of uh, working remotely that I do have, without all of this, I would not be able to resist or to be resilient enough in front of the pressure of, that my work demands and keep my family and keep face in front of my family. I'm not talking, I need my person, my contribution, which is less, of course, now. It has been, it has taken on a different dimension because of my family. I need it to be considered as a value. I feel this need. Many of my colleagues tried to change my shifts in order for me to be able to do the jobs that I needed to do. And for me, this is significant because it is the expression of a desire for me to be present in, the work, in my workplace, for me to be able to contribute and give my contribution. And these are examples that I see in my personal experience for my contribution to really be generative and to be able to give, to give a contribution. This is the passion for man that allows me, that enables me 
to create spaces within these organizational um, companies, this possibility, which is the only possibility in which uh, we can, in which man can give the best of his efforts. So, therefore, working is the desire to express oneself. Michele says that this is generative, but it also requires a space for someone to ask me, to give me that space and say, what do you think? And ask me to bring all of myself to the table. The more this space is uh, given, the more we can grow. Okay, I will try and talk about myself now. The, the What struck me the most was the question about the three-legged stool and the uh, mentors. So right now I have had the chance, the opportunity to change my job, my uh, my company very uh, quite a few times despite keeping the same uh, job I asked myself what were these uh, three legs of the stool I'll try and give an example the last time I tried to change company or change firm was because a friend of mine asked me to change firm and go and work with him. I had a great esteem for my ex-boss and for how that company managed itself. But uh, since I, but I have always tried to move based on what attracted me uh, and not so much rationalize and balance the three different legs of the stool. I can't but quote, in order to take a decision, I cannot but think about the relationship with my wife and my friends, because my wife herself said, I would like to build with you, I want to build something with you, with someone who takes his passion seriously. So let's go, let's follow this, this passion that you have. And this is what was essential for me. And with regards to learning, I started in a small consult consultancy uh, firm and I had the opportunity to have a close relationship with my colleagues since it was a small firm. And I think that relationships are fundamental both in the workplace and outside. And in these and I have always focused on certain characteristics of some of these. For example, I envied uh, the capacity, the skill of some of these colleagues to read certain dynamics some uh, or mechanisms. I esteemed uh, the management skills of other colleagues and certain other colleagues. And I realized that in time, my small, humble attempt was to make all of these qualities that I found interesting and make them mine. And I tried and tried again to bring them to the a company, to the to a company and outside and extrapolate them from the consultancy firm. So have I had a specific figure role model? Not quite. I have focused on qualities that I saw in the people in front of me and I've tried to make them mine and, and take them seriously. This is the, the, the people that I found most, imp most interesting. Another characteristic that I also esteem are people who are straightforward and get to the point. And that is something that I try to imitate without censoring who I am, but trying to adapt myself to this quality. This is a professional and existential challenge. 
the three-legged stool help us, helps us to understand this type of professional development. And from this understanding, we can also take professional decisions. The relationships that were the foundation of this decision are a very important point that helps you to uh, take a step and bet on your desire, on how others as well uh, proposed also to take a risk and change company. And if I can also, I think I, th I understand that there there is not one single mentor, but within the circumstances, there can be many different mentors with which we can become one in a creative sense and understand them creatively, and which is what you explained, which make uh, our jobs uh, work more and more enjoyable. I'd like to connect to what Daniele said. Uh, because I'd like to say something about mentors and learning. The question, which is the question which uh, interests me the most, that stimulates me the most. So from a professional point of view, I have worked most of my life in the banking sector. I have encountered many different people from very different backgrounds. And if I look at my way of working today, I can't but realize that there are various aspects of my way of working that I connect to the people of these very different backgrounds that I have met. The practicality in managing uh, all the various duties that our manager was gave me at the beginning of my career. Uh, and my manager himself, uh, his tirelessness uh, in his way of working, and the way that he led the whole team, looking at each one of us individually with each with each one's objectives, in and bringing everything together in a way that uh, didn't seem possible from the outset. I have noticed two characteristics in these people that I have met. Two of these people that I met. Mo that I learned the most from. The first thing was the uh, availability to share something as a value, both from a point, point of view of method uh, and of skills. So people who share what they think is valuable in terms of skills and uh, working method. And the other characteristic is the desire that I grow professionally. This is a characteristic a quality that really marked me very much. I could give an example. So uh, launching myself in areas that were out of my comfort zone, which I would have gladly asked other people to take my place, People pushed me to go in these outside of my comfort zone, and this helped me because it helped me to grow. If, if I had to think of one person that was like a mentor for me in these years, with which I would say, which with which I would I would identify a hundred percent. I nobody in particular comes to mind because there is a characteristic in even the most fascinating people that I have met that blocks me in a certain sense. I have always seen a sort of um, lack of freedom in management, an ultimate lack of freedom in the banking sector. Even in the people that I found most fascinating from a professional point of view. And that at the end of the day, they tried to save face. And I try 
to uh, always do my best in my work without um, without going against what I believe in. Many times it has happened to me that I've gone to a client and given them the full span of various products that we offer, not, um, not with the intention to show him what he might need, but to show him the full span in order to say, well, at least I was, uh, in a sense, um, I showed him everything that was available and uh, I am uh, protected in a certain sense if he were to make a mistake. Uh, this aspect emerged also when I decided to change my job. Some, I think that in my case, the uh, legs that I didn't uh, have of that three-legged stool, there are many more than three in my case, and sometimes uh, uh, I have also reasoned with the criterion of money. Uh, maybe stay here so that you will be able to uh, put away some more money, but I still haven't, I certainly have learned a lot from many different people, and I value what they have given me so much, but I still have not been able to find one person that I would like to identify myself completely 100% in the way that they handle their work. Thanks, Peter. You're talking about the people you've uh, you've met, and I, I kind of detected a sense of gratitude with regards to these people. And gratitude really kicks us off, gets us going. The responsibility is often born from a certain level of gratitude. The gratitude for for, for someone who's taught us something in in the workplace, and who's opened us uh, a, a way to proceed. And you kind of showed, uh, given us an example of that. When someone shares uh, the value of the work you have in a context in which often we say that work and professionalism, we have to steal from people, uh, steal it from others. If they give it to us, it makes a difference. So to have someone who communicates a certain desire to, for success with you, who, uh, that stimulates you, that really gets you driven, you were saying that even, even you know, the context has a certain weight to it because often the, the context we work in can be unproductive towards us wanting to, to take risks. And so you said, sometimes I, I struggle to see, you know, in summary, what, what I need to be doing, because if you don't have your, if you don't have your own freedom, you're, you're, you're really unwilling to take risks in work and you're eventually you, you don't express yourself fully. And this shows, uh, regardless of the context you're in, honestly, but it happens, especially when you're, you're in a, in a time when you change job, when you're making big changes. So, Andrea, I'll ask you this. You're, we haven't heard from you yet. So, Dr. Guidi was telling us that he's interested, but also very interesting. So, I was wondering if you could, by, by kind of answering his, some, we could, answering what you're saying, you could answer the first couple of questions he asked. You know, we'll tackle the first and then see if we can move on. So first, I'd like to, on the, the question of the reason of why to work, or the, the, the reason for which I do things, I'd like to kind of throw something back at you, because, you know, with regards, many questions arise towards what I do every day, especially because, you know, the, while listening to me, you, uh, you might get a chance of the, um, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm already managing, because I'm talking last, to hear, to develop some new answers to what we're doing. Two points here on the uh, the question of this the three-legged stool. We said many things about this. I'm someone who's always been moved with the idea of finding somewhere I can learn, like we said, and I, w I won't beat around the bush or bang on now. But the one thing I'd add is that I the thing that I'm I've been living through recently in the last couple of years is the, the idea of giving back, the idea of responsibility. So, you know, I, I'm not. 
24 anymore. I, I, I've got kids now, so I'm, I go to work now thinking about my family. That even in my case, my my family is is now a, enters into the, the the sense of the reason why I work, and as well as res with respect to the company that pays me, the the people I work for. You know, now I'm, I've been a bit troubled this year for many reasons. I've, I've felt the need to to learn, to, to develop, but also to have the ability to give back. You know, for example, where I work, we did a something which in HR we often do. We, uh, we had a great kind of survey. We love getting feedback from our from people, and I found myself uh, really committing to going toward going back to my boss and going. I, I really want to answer to. That the points people have raised by doing this, this, and this give me the opportunity to kind of express what I want to do here. I've been working for eight, nine years here, and I was and joined with working is is the idea of responsibility. I wanted to take point on on a project here. So on this question of of people, it's it's important for me, my my colleagues. I've always had some some great bosses, even in my my past working in logistics. There were a good few of us in the team, but we all learnt a lot, and it's always it's very important for me the idea of not being alone. Even from the beginning, you know, for for one with the kind of path I've had, I've always tried to to build relationships with professionals, who eventually become friends for me. And I, I not, it's not only a question of it of, of kind of escape, but I want to be able to go and and ask for you know both technical questions to these people but the people that the true masters in my opinion the people I really care about uh, there's a couple that come to mind one in particular whose whose approach is he helps me to look at work differently to take a, a positive attitude towards problem solving so when we we're preparing things you know and I, I tell them I'll tell him stuff at lunch he, t he starts from a different hypothesis that through all these difficult things we can have a chance to learn and this really propels me every time I go to work and it affects my relationship with my colleagues this idea of learning it's just something quick I wanted to add here now you know, it's worth saying it's important this the, the place uh, somewhere where you can learn where you can give back in your case to your family and as such to kind of broaden your horizons here in, in what you're building you know we said what, what's kind of the mosaic that drives you the the end point that the, the thing that keeps you going throughout the week it's not just about giving back to the company but also back to yourself and you you take a kind of level of being the main character of of having to to take the initiative and and live a sense of belonging in in the company when you especially when you feel that your voice is heard in this it's important to not be alone but to be in the company of people who don't only help you Tech in a technical sense, but also give you this kind of this outlook that you, you you feel wanted and you feel included. And so let's go back to your questions. So the, the question was, I, I worked in logistics first in uh, air transport. I was a kind of I was an HR manager. And I, I've always been dealing with a certain kind of a uh, of problem. It, the, the, let's say that the idea of an of a final aim, I've always I've always felt dear to my heart. I, w I always want to know why I'm doing a certain thing, and so the value I can, especially the value I can bring. And if I don't know this, I always get confused. So I always think I always try to, to work as hard as possible to to look at uh, the different procedures with which uh, and through which I, employees can be given an idea of why of the idea uh, people who where the management's going, the way the projects are going, and so I always talk to people every day who tell me. Well, there's lots of problems here. Let's talk about uh, shifts. Let's talk about uh, salaries. Let's talk about the the training we get. So faced with this, I feel that there's 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 always something new. That we need to have a new outlook. The, there's always a new problem coming up, and I feel like to try and make uh, a colleague understand that what what he what he or she does is important. I have to concretely enter into into what they do. I have to actually look at the problems they raise, look at if they're being given the correct training, see if they're being um, compensated fairly, because it's in it's in their conditions, the way they work, the, the conditions in which they work, that people learn and see if they're truly being valued or not. So the question is this, really: How do you help your your colleagues to be always? To become more aware that of the of the value they bring to the company and of uh, what they can give back. Pietro, you also had a question. 
Yes, absolutely. L linked on to this that we, we've touched on, the idea of being an individual, of feeling alone, often when I, I, I can't find, I can't think of why I'm doing a certain thing or I lose sight of myself, it, it raises a certain conflict and it look, makes me look at myself in a different way. And this translates into a, a situation that makes me, look at, makes me look elsewhere, a new boss, another workplace, a new, uh, new conditions, a new company. Because where I feel an absence, that, that's kind of, it, it feels like an enemy to me and I fight against that where, wherever I have this, this lack. And I wanted to ask you, in your career, has it ever happened to you that you've, you know, with an individualist approach that you've had to move or that you've been faced with, with people who are too rigid, who are immobile? And is there something that, you, that helps you kind of get over this position? And so I'll add, add on quickly now that everyone in their own career starts from their own desire and from their own needs. And obviously this is something healthy. As you're saying, when we have to, to, to look at ourselves and see our, where we are in our career, a kind of, that level of individuality, in my experience, it, it often therefore extends over to the people that I work with as well. You know, I work in the same place for nine years. I've seen people come and go, four bosses I've had as long as I've been working there. And often I felt um, unwanted, I felt unsatisfied, I wanted... Uh, the way I work to change, that I, I, I desired something new or I want, for example, to work less or to have more responsibility, to change my hours or to get a, a, a bonus that reflects better to, the, to how much I've given back to the company. And there's been many moments with many different bosses who I've, I've had to deal with who I felt like the only way to, to improve was, was, was to change, to change job, to change situation. And that shifts when I'm faced with someone who, who I feel like sees me as another person, not only as just a resource, as a tool, someone to reach an objective, but as a, as a human. Often I, I reduce the question of how much I work or of how I work, the responsibilities I have, to how, to, to how much I'll get back in my bonus. And it often struck me as a way that often happens in investment banking, I, I do that too as well. I was struck recently by a conversation I had with my new boss who restarted the idea of something else. He, he, he sent me to look about, made me look at my, my life in its totality, in its wholeness, and, and to really take work-life balance into, into, into consideration. The idea that outside of work, there's much, much more to life. So not, that I should only not only meet my budgeting requirements for the team, but I should also, equally important objective is that I live fully. And this has kind of driven my, my career path. How, how can I make the, the people that I lit that work for me, uh, can, how can I make sure that they reach that we're a place where they, they see themselves and they see each other as human? So how can we make our colleagues more aware of what their, their own value is? When you're in a, a more selfish position, how do you, how do you make your way out of when you're, you feel stuck somewhere? You know, we always hear about people who they, they feel stuck in, the, in, in their own work. And thirdly, how, uh, it's about growth. Um, how do we manage to, to share with ourselves and with our colleagues a, a more a deep, rich and human outlook on our work and on life as a whole? You know, to, to widen our horizons. So first of all, I thank you for, for all this, uh, everything you've mentioned here, for your contributions here. You know, many of the things we're talking about we're, are already here. You've already experienced them. You've already mentioned them. The theme of, of feeling seen, of feeling appreciated, uh, of being feeling human and seen as such, rather, and, and that you bring bringing things to work. I remember during an interview uh, for, for a young architect, she told me, it's the first time in an interview someone looks at me as a human and not as a, a sum of some, my, my experiences. And I said, good, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Because at Lombardi 22, we, we, we look for, for people. In many cases, the people don't really know yet what, what they'll become in life, what they, they want to do. And that's kind of true for everyone. There's an example where 
botanical example that trees, when they're small, they're just all green. But only when they get older do you truly see their colors. Now, it's clear that at the beginning, people don't really know well what they're strong at, what they're, where, where their strengths are, especially in the world of work. So feelings for them, feelings, feeling seen and therefore looking at them in a certain way, giving them trust, being put on a, a project that's bigger than each of us, then you think, oh, I can't do this. But in reality, yes, you very much can. You can because you know that next to you, the people you work with is someone who, who isn't judging you, who isn't actively working against you. It's someone who helps you. It's someone who's there to keep your hand. It's in a kind of paternalist sense. We, we hold your hand, then we, we, we let you go. We let you be independent. That's the whole point. We, we get, let people gain a certain trust in themselves. And understanding on the what you've been talking about earlier, I've had certain bosses who've always told me in a very clear way what I need to do, X, Y, Z. Yes, this is all right. Oh, watch out for this because this might not work. You know, it can be difficult for some people being an o a level of too much clarity can, can, can harm how they work. It works for some, doesn't for others. You know, people, some, some kinds of people get truly crushed by negative feedback. And this is where the idea of, of, of recognizing how other people work is so important. Often what we see as a throwaway comment can truly hurt people. And that this then generates difficulty, generates negativity even of, a, of guilt in the moment. And so something breaks in this relationship with, with the colleague. So as far as your kind of the emotive accounts you've got going and when we, 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 we can, the, what we give to people, we can also take back. When we pour our attention into people, they, they do give back to us eventually. When you, you the, if you just think, I, I, oh, I produce and I consume, I work, you pay me, and the other is just the man who pays me, this is a bit rigid. It's a, it's a bit of an external structure that it doesn't, it just, it just makes us see our value in, in, in the money we bring and the success we have. It's, they're roads potentially that are a bit more dangerous, in my opinion. Because, you know, who are we talking about? Your, your, your colleague there, she, you know, she's got four children. It's clear that she knows her value doesn't only come from her work. Often we can see it, it's happened to me as well, that, that the feeling being stuck in this mechanism, oh, but if I, if, if I don't get to this level, if I don't become a, a partner in this many years, and if I then don't become a manager within six years and a CEO within eight, and then, uh, you, the, you know, the, this is a bit, it's a bit of a, a toxic way. It's, it, we, we see things as a ladder, but often we need to we need to be a bit more open to things. So that life isn't that linear, especially these days. So I'll start kind of from the roots and say, how can we help each other? Um, I think listening to each other is 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 primary to that, and and asking, in a, a kind of a more lateral, indirect way, how are we seen? How do we get uh, perceived by our by our bosses? By, are we building a, a functioning system? Are we building a community? Uh, and, and is this coming about effectively? Are, are people looking for us? Are they, do they trust us? Do they know that, uh, that we're not judgmental? For example, the, the idea of, of being wrong, it's something that we, we, we've been working on a lot. Being wrong, you know, judgment, how to judge errors, it, it leads people to, to get stuck, to, to just to just stop. And that's what we, we heard earlier. I, 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 I'll, I blame everything just to save my own skin. You know, and this means problems don't get, uh, don't get challenged properly. One of the most fundamental elements is the fear of, of wanting to leave from our, our own little box. We, we don't want to lose our, our job or our, our, our position. The fear of not growing of, with, with the kind of our preconception can be damaging. Focusing unhelpful, unhealthily on, on what we do wrong, on our mistakes, can, can really collapse people's uh, self-worth. They, 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 if, if you, people feel like, oh, you've made an error, you've made a mistake, I'm going to fire you, they, they start to lose sight of their kind of their human trajectory 
rather, we, you know, a mistake is a chance for us to learn together. You know, many bosses say, oh, you made that mistake. It, it's, 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 it's my it's my fault. Okay, well, no, it's not It's not a blame game. It's not your fault, my fault. Okay, there's been a mistake. Let's try and understand together. Okay, what can we do? How can we fix this? So all these prob these things have already come out from the, the discussions we've been having. It's, it's already quite clear. There's certain fundamental elements of our, our shared life. We've been talking about family. The outlook our families have on us is, is very important. How we use our time, our, our dedication to our work. Often work is, is, an, ex is an excuse to not, uh, to not manage with our facts. I, I talk, especially in the case of men, it's a, they use their work as a way to ignore their families. You know, my wife's mother's 93 and she says, well, okay, you, you leave me alone a bit. I, I, and then we think, we, you know, we say, oh, but, but I, I need to work, Grandma. I can't look after the kids. You have to deal with them. Well, yes, it's true. But we also do have some responsibility towards these people. You know, our, our parents, our grandparents, we can't just leave them to do certain things we can't be bothered to do. You know, in this case, this is how we see that working too hard is actually... Uh, makes you deficient in certain other areas, in certain places where we need to be committing ourselves. I, I heard it say from the, the, the volleyball coach, um, even in times of crisis, you need to stay close to, to those who are dear to you. Even when things are good, you need to do it because when you're in tough times, the people who are dear to you, they're the ones who will help you. And if you haven't built any functioning relationships, if you don't work on them, then you will lose them when things get tough. So I, I was aware at a certain point that even if I'd worked, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't develop past a certain point. It's like sport, you know, you, there's only a certain a period in time in which you can train, but after that you kind of, you hit a wall that you physically can't go on. And we need to understand, to, to find this balance between what I can give and, and what, what I can create out of that. And not only just that one single result, I can, I can, problems can come from that, become, if they can become cumulative, uh, then, then people get angry, people get annoyed, and things can often collapse if we don't find a, a true balance, a healthy, something, a healthy way of working. We can become overly negative. So we need to avoid overworking, giving people too much, and then finding ourselves kind of in debt. You know, think about with bosses, with families, we need, balance okay I've given a lot that means I can take back we need to try and not be in debt figuratively if you're too much in debt uh, we, we, we need to accept that sometimes that happens uh, some people give more than they that, that they take and that's when we kind of feel hard done by okay we feel like I haven't been given enough for what I've done but other people are taking too much and we often feel like we've been in this situation and as a boss this is particularly important on the question of motivation on feeling important I remember I, I heard a speech from a, a, a trainer for the Olympics and he, he, he'd said something about a, it was a, Roy, a, a race where you earned points and he said he had won one, one best athlete but who, he was he was an expert in this in many other things he would have, he would have failed and he said okay well if i focus on this this one guy he can win a race but then that's it so he worked on all kind of let's say it's called the number 2s and the number 3s and he said if the number if he's a 2 then so he, now we can think that he's in a place to win if he's a 3 build him up to be number 2 and so we focus on a group as a whole focusing on on a group of individuals and working on them and by doing so, he, he was able to, to earn more points by focusing individually on each athlete and building them up professionally. Often we're, we're too focused, uh, we're kind of hyper-focused on the, what our kind of our kingmaker, uh, the thing that brings the most business, the most successful thing, and often that's kind of the most individualistic person because he takes on the, too much responsibility to himself and in the workplace often that person becomes un, kind of untouchable. So on top of being kind of unproductive, these people can really 
turn people off. They, they bring back a lot of their own personal glory, but it, it creates chaos back within the organization itself. So with respect to how I challenge people who are too selfish, I, I first try to, to talk, it, to, to be straight with them, that I'm not only looking at results, often and, and they look weirdly at me for that like what on earth do you mean you're not looking for results you know as a you know we, we hire people a friend of mine said we hire people for results but we fire them for their behavior so be careful with how you behave because if you if you just leave scorched earth behind you people people will eventually hate you and that will detract strongly from the the work you're trying to bring you know if you think it's, it's just like you have to be careful of the consequences of your actions. And I found that if, if, if these selfish people can't manage, I, I, I was talking to someone who was very self-egotistical but brought, generated a lot of revenue. I said that the relationship between him and I was totally dysfunctional because he kept, kept asking and I, and I felt uh, unable, I felt deficient because I wasn't able to help him. I wasn't able to, to, to answer and I said if things carry on like this I'm worried because your your selfishness leads me to, to, to not have to be to be left without words here you know I, I want to give you things but I, I understand that it's not enough that you want more and so, okay well I, I can't do any more Let, go on then and that generated a, a positive kind of thinking and and eventually things did change for the better but I had to obviously leave my comfort zone and and kind of put myself there on display and go well okay more we can't move on from here unless things change and for me this is an important thing for bosses to, to show your own strengths but also be willing to show your own fragility when we say you know that we need others it's important that, that that's an honest uh, statement to need others it's 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 a, it's it's a, it's a said thing people say it a lot oh the most important thing is the team but to need others truly actually means i i'm not good at this one thing please help me i'm struggling here i don't know what i don't know how to get out of this i don't know how to deal and solve this help me to, to, to entrust your success to others, to, to have the courage to admit that we can't do everything on our own, we're not omniscient. And faced with this fragility, these are kind of the handles on which people attach themselves, these, it, 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 generates, truth, it generates truthful, sincere bonds and that builds a true working community. Because fundamentally, it's no one has all the answers. That's something I. It's an example I often give that the most selfish people I see, or even in uh, high flyers, or the thought that okay, well, I'm the boss. I have to that people try and reach that. It's it's not that simple. It's not all about all about growing. You know, promotion, promotion. We're all in uncertain waters. I I bring some experience. You bring a certain level of courage someone else brings some uh, some awareness and together we, we we can face this challenge ahead of us we can't think that we have all the answers and uh, and to just give those answers to other people people are, are connect gain these connections when they feel uh, valued it's not you can't impose that on others we need to create a context in which people can uh, can feel valued we can we should need to try and catalyze building a foundation on which skyscrapers can be built things cannot be done the other way around that's simple to do it the other way around is purely manipulative and it becomes incredibly evident that it is such we need to also accept the fact that people have different times they they work on a different clock the idea of managerial patience is crucial which today is a bit of an oxymoron because the manager doesn't have time and he needs to show that quickly that he's the busiest one and this is something we need to fight back against because another an example we often give is that you can grow you know like a bean but we, we'd rather grow like a you know like a, a mighty palm tree something like that you know like an oak and that's the important thing there's there's different ways to grow and this seems particularly stimulating to me what you're saying 
and the the story of your journey because you 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 left the a, a multinational corporation because you wanted to uh, to start something new like you said you wanted to build a, a, a community or a working community a community which is uh, aware that the context it creates the context we work in let's think about nowadays it's a strongly it's a strong context of uncertainty and if we have the ability to, to, to face this building trust with one another like you were talking about that's how we can rediscover a, a real kind of taste for the difficulty of work a real passion for what we do and one of the conditions you you were hinting to earlier it's building a balance in 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 your in your work and your life and being aware of your own uh, your own limits because being aware of your own limits opens up a chance to build a, a better relationship the especially as a boss to to to, to, to be to be seen to be vulnerable because within that relationship, it's a, it's a relationship of care, fundamentally. But it, 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 when faced with this kind of selfish, uh, with selfishness, you have to be you have to be ready to 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 give up there because otherwise, it things just collapse back into the way the system just works. Or you have to tell people, look, I, I don't know how to answer your questions. And seeing that means keeping alive a, a spirit of community and this kind of this. Uh, these relationships that develop that in a time like ours it, it comes to a close at the end of this uh, discussion sorry I, I, I've, I've got a, a ticking clock in front of me that's uh, telling me that we're almost seven minutes over running and so I'd like to thank all of you but especially we'd like to tell you that this uh, conference was born from a dialogue and we'd like to continue that dialogue so who in a, in a, who, who, whoever wants in these uh, this social media world, you have all our names. Please, please get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. What are you taking away from this discussion? We, and if you have an interest in a, uh, in working together and in propagating a, a dialogue on the nature of work, this dialogue has been made possible thanks to the meeting. And as you know, the the meeting is a is a completely unique event, and. It, it, it's something always new and it's is generated by a, a very human unique collaboration these are words you will have heard a million times but I'll repeat it now with a certain certain good taste with a for thank in thanks for the space we've had today because a civilization doesn't grow without a uh, culture and dialogue is is a an in a vital part of that the meeting is a place of culture and all of you are, are able to uh, to to contribute to donate to to keep this uh, this meeting going to keep this amazing experience. Uh, all along the fiera, you'll find uh, boxes saying "donate here." They're all marked by a red heart, and do donations should only go to the dedicated desks just to be safe. And at these desks, you'll have volunteers wearing uh, red T-shirts with. Dona Ara or Donate Now marked on them. And an important new change is uh, we're entering in whoever uh, supports the meeting can can now uh, claim it on a tax return. So thank you Franco Guidi, thank you all of you, thank you Barbara, Davide, Luca and Michele and Pietro for, for all their contributions today. Thank you and goodbye. Grazie Pietro, eh? È stato bello. Bravi, bene. Grazie. Grande. civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà, lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo.